Akhenaten was a revolutionary pharaoh who ruled over Egypt at the height of his power, around 1353. He's famous for completely overhauling Egyptian religion, creating one of the earliest known monotheistic religions. He was succeeded by Tutankhamun, who was swift in restoring Egyptian religion back to its previous polytheistic roots. Akhenaten established a religious system based on the worship of Aten, the sun god, which has become known to be Atenism. Prior to Atenism, Egyptians worshipped a diverse range of gods, many of them abstract in idea and form, who would often interchange with each other. The worship of Aten, though, was focused on a single, tangible, natural entity, the sun. The changes brought about by Akhenaten were extraordinary. They meant not just a huge shift in the religious belief systems, but also massive changes in Egyptian philosophy, art, and architecture. He also moved the Egyptian capital from Thebes to a remote site that he named Akhetaten, Horizon of Aten. Akhetaten first came to throne as Amontep IV in 1353 BC. During the first four years of his reign, though, Amenhotep ruled as normal. He and his fellow Egyptians worshipped a wide range of gods, including Anubis, Osiris, and Ra. However, in his fifth year as pharaoh, Amenhotep decided to transform the entire basis of Egyptian religion in a period that has fascinated historians throughout the ages. The very philosophy behind this new religion was revolutionary, to say the least. Prior to his rule, Egyptian religion was centered around the worship of abstract gods, whose physical identity varied in form. Akhenaten not only focused on one sole god, but Aten was visible tangible part of the physical world, the sun. To demonstrate this, the life-giving sun of Aten was worshipped outside, with followers literally playing up to the sky. To reinforce this new religious philosophy, he launched some dramatic changes. First of all, he changed his name to Akhenaten, which established a clear connection between him and Aten, the sun god. His original name, Amenhotep, referred to the traditional god Amun, and meant Amun is satisfied. His new name both bid farewell to Amun and advocated the worship of Aten. Akhenaten basically meant, it is effective for Aten. Akhenaten created a narrative so that his people could visualize the relationship between their pharaoh and this new god. He claimed to be the voice of Aten, and he was living as a representation of the sun god. In order to accomplish this, Akhenaten needed to do two things. The first step was to get rid of all evidence and traces of previous gods of worship. He sent out agents to remove any preferences and references to pre-existing gods and texts and on temples and monuments. In particular, he wanted the removal of anything to do with Amon, or Amen. Amon was one of, if not the most important of the Egyptian gods. He represented sun and air, and it was revered throughout Egypt with his image on monuments and buildings, tombs inside of temples. Akhenaten had his workers chisel away any records to do with Amon. Statues were destroyed and new monuments were planned. He chose an unoccupied site on the Nile to create Egypt's new capital at Tel al-Amarna, and it was named Akhetaton, meaning the horizon of Aten. Akhenaten claimed that Aten had spoken to him and chose that this site specifically. He wanted this new city to be built quickly, so smaller bricks called Talatat were used. These building blocks were easier for unskilled laborers to work with, and the city and its monuments were constructed in under three years. From here, Akhenaten began erecting monuments and temples dedicated to this new god. Temples were adorned with images depicting rich harvests for happy and prosperous people. With the new religion came a new style of art, described as Armana. It was markedly different from traditional depictions of Egyptian pharaohs and their gods. Before Akhenaten, people were painted symmetrically. Pharaohs were typically portrayed as muscular, well-proportioned males, involved in suitably king-like pursuits, such as hunting or triumphing in battle. However, the Armana style was more uh, androgynous, with men and women being depicted with long heads, narrow shoulders, and thick waists and thighs. There was also the intricate detailing of their features, such as eyelashes and earlobes. This was a wildly innovative approach to Egyptian art, and a real breakaway from tradition. In some ways, Akhenaten could be seen as encouraging a more expressive and realistic form of art, as people in the Armana period were painted as imperfect humans. One can only imagine the reaction from Akhenaten's contemporaries when they saw him and his wife being portrayed in such a notably different style. 
So why did Akhenaten opt for such a revolutionary change in religion and in, in what has come to be known as the Armana period? Written records are scarce, so we can mainly guess his motivations. Akhenaten's successors destroyed most of the evidence of his reign and were quick to restore Egyptian religion to its natural roots, its traditional roots. One thing is clear. During his 17-year reign, Akhenaten was determined to erase any traces of previous gods, while at the same time tying himself inextricably to Aten. Some historians have suggested that this may have been politically motivated. Priests attached to the god Amun had formed considerable influence and power. By making himself the sole voice of Aten, Akhenaten was able to keep Egypt's priest leaders under his control. Of course, it might also have simply been a matter of ego. Akhenaten was possibly taking full advantage of being king and basking in the glory that came with anointing himself as the chosen one from the sun god. Previously, Egyptian gods were accessible to anyone via worship and prayer. However, with Atenism, only Akhenaten could act as the mediator between the god and his worshippers. Whatever the case, it all came crashing down when he died. He was soon succeeded by his own son, Tutankhamun, who wasted zero time, as I said, in restoring Egyptian religion and society back to its former roots. Tutankhamun's original name was Tutankhaten, dedicated to Aten. However, when he became king, he changed it to Tutankhamun, signifying the return to the prominence of the god Amun. It was also a clear way of demonstrating the end of Atenism. Tutankhamun then restored Thebes as Egypt's capital and began a campaign of destroying any monuments, arts, and records relating to Akhenaten's reign and the worship of Aten. During Akhenaten's reign, he had become content to focus on Egypt and the worship of Aten. He showed very little interest in foreign affairs, and Egypt lost several territories in the Middle East and the Nubian region. Tutankhamun was determined that Egypt should return to its former religious traditions and expansion of its empire. He reversed the reforms of his father and ordered the restoration of Egypt's polytheistic religious traditions. Amun again became the principal god of worship. Traditional art styles were revived and new monuments and temples were constructed to replace the memories of Atenism. It was almost 3,000 years later that historians discovered the significance of Akhenaten's upheavals and his imprint on Egyptian society. Akhenaten has come to be viewed in a variety of ways. Some say he was a true visionary. Others think he was simply a heretic abusing his power. Some even say that there are strong similarities between the creation of Atenism and the future three Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But whatever the case, Akhenaten was definitely one of the world's first true individuals. <laughs>